The opposition's accusing Wayne Swan of class warfare after the Treasurer today said some billionaires were using their wealth to undermine democracy for their own benefit. Mr Swan says the opposition is involved in the plot to divert more wealth into the pockets of the rich. Meanwhile, opposition finance spokesman Andrew Robb has suggested the coalition's policy of generous paid parental leave isn't quite settled. Political correspondent Tommy Goulden reports from Canberra. Julia Gillard's new and promoted ministers were sworn in today, minus Bob Carr, who's still to be cleared to take up his Senate seat. With the squeeze put on the Rudd faction... <laughs> Could I just ask that all the mobiles are uh, switched off? The new ministry is looking keen, with one exception. Rudd backer Kim Carr's disappointment at being shifted from manufacturing to human services was palpable, <laughs> while others savoured the moment at Government House. I present the Honourable Kim John Carr. Senator Carr fought a losing battle to look enthusiastic. But down the road at the National Press Club, the Treasurer was spoiling for a fight. You've already had a go at the banks and their leaders, uh, which could resume... What's new about that? Which could resume tomorrow. In his crosshairs this time, mining magnates Gina Reinhart, Andrew Twiggy Forrest and Clive Palmer. Because the way in which I've, I've watched some of these vested interests deploy their political power is, in my view, uh, profoundly anti-democratic. And what I don't want to see is a change in influence lead to a change in income distribution and a lessening of mobility. Here's a message to Canberra. From campaigns against the government's mining tax to what Mr Swan calls misinformation about its carbon tax, the Treasurer says mining's mega-rich aren't acting alone. The combination of deep pockets, conservative political support and, of course, the ranting of shock jocks more and more brazenly has sought to defend and promote the interests of a very narrow section of our economy. In response, Mr Palmer called the Treasurer an intellectual pygmy and Andrew Forrest took out full-page newspaper ads while Ms Reinhart said nothing publicly. The opposition was less backward about coming forward. And when you talk about vested interests, uh, there are very few vested interests more powerful than the faceless men in the Labor Party. We've seen that graphically over the last week to ten days. The Treasurer says Tony Abbott's opposition can't afford to criticise Mr Palmer and his ilk. He is, of course, singing for his supper. We can see that in the, in the donations from the likes of Clive Palmer that have flooded into the Coalition's coffers in recent years. I really resent uh, the way the Treasurer engages in this sort of uh, envy in, in the class war. These are the convenient phrases used by the champions of privilege. One thing the opposition certainly has been championing since the last election is a paid parental leave scheme. Tony Abbott, uh, some would say ironically, has a more generous paid parental leave scheme than the government's. Now one of its front benches is suggesting the scheme could be changed. We haven't finalised any of our major policies. We had some that we took to the last election and that's one of them. Now the potential for us to spend will not spend next time, will depend on what the government does. Deputy Opposition Leader Julie Bishop quickly assured voters that Tony Abbott reaffirmed support for the scheme only last week. Well, who are we to believe? Are we to believe Tony Abbott's boasting and Julie Bishop backing him up or the person who's supposed to be in charge of the numbers saying that they haven't finalised it? Tonight, Andrew Robbs issued a statement saying his comments were about new policy possibilities and denying that included the paid parental leave scheme, to which he says the opposition is still, of course, committed. Tom Higgledon, Late Line.